Call to order the meeting of the Salem City Council for Monday, August 14th, 2023 to order. If the recorder will please call the roll. Councilor Stapleton. I'm here. Councilor Nishioka. Here. Councilor Phillips is absent. Councilor Gwynn. Here. Councilor Gonzalez. Here. Councilor Hoy. Here. Councilor Nordyke. Here. Councilor Varney. Here. Mayor Hoy. Here. And when you all join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Councillor Stapleton, do we have any additions or deletions to the agenda? We do. I move revisions and deletions to the agenda. Second. Thank you. Moved Our, by Stapleton, seconded by, was that Hoy? Thank you. Great. Tonight we are going to be taking off or deleting um, item 5.A, uh, which was uh, Councillor Nishioka's motion. And on 5.C, we have a revised attachment. Any further discussion? Councillor Nishioka. Thank you, Mayor Hoy. Um, I just wanted to make a couple remarks on pulling 5A. I just felt that the um, timing was not quite right with uh, a similar motion um, also in front of us. Um, and uh, while I feel that the concept of open house for city regions is sound, and, uh, but I'm currently concerned about the budget and just feel like maybe we need a little bit of time. Um, and that the city's also working on new uh, strategic planning for communications. And so this might be something that will come forward at a later date. Thank you, Councillor. Any further discussion? Will the recorder please call the roll? Councillor Stapleton. Aye. Councillor Nishioka. Aye. Councillor Phillips absent. Councillor Gwynn. Aye. Councillor Gonzalez. Aye. Councillor Hoy. Aye. Councillor Nordyke. Aye. Councillor Varney. Aye. Mayor Hoy. Aye. Motion passes. It is now time for council and city manager comments, and I would like to welcome acting city manager Brian Martin, and he has some comments for us. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and city council members. Um, I wanted to share this evening that we are planning to uh, apply for a PROTECT grant for the South River Road slide mitigation. Normally you'd see that in a staff report. We'd come through and ask uh, permission from council to do so. We didn't have time. Uh, to, to do that this time. The applications are due on Friday, uh, but I want to let everyone know that we're going to go ahead and apply for that grant of, of $20 million. And PROTECT stands for Promoting Resilient Operations for Transformative, Efficient, and Cost-Saving Transportation. So, any, if there are any questions, please let me know. Thank you, Mr. Martin. That is a wonderful government acronym, PROTECT. <laughs> Not ours. It's from the federal government. So, any questions for the city manager on that? Great. Any other councilor comments? Councilor Nishioka. Um, thank you. Um, I just wanted to uh, say that I had the opportunity to go to the um, dedication of the one room schoolhouse, the Centurion School, and they've moved it from where it was. Uh, it was in Wasco County and have refurbished it, and it's now at the state fairgrounds. And it is darling. It was really a um, fun little open house. And I think that the site that they picked was nice so that people uh, during the state fair can go visit it and other times. So I wanted to say that. I also went out to the um, Englewood Festival, which I understand uh, Councillor Hoy was also there working. And um, I had a great time visiting with the vendors. Uh, it was a nice event. And I saw the glass artist that's making the little birds that are in the Salem Seekers that are going out to all the parks. And it was very cute. This way I, don't, I can have one and I don't have to go search for it in a park. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the last comment is, I know that all of us are, um, our hearts are sad for Maui and Hawaii with the wildfires. And you know, who would have thought that an island would have wildfires? Um, pretty surprising. And I know I've had constituents call sort of asking how Salem can help. And I basically recommended that they go to um, the state of Hawaii and support it however they can at the state level there. Thank you, Councillor. I got the opportunity to meet the mayor of Maui and spend a few days with him last fall, and he's, uh, I know that he's uh, 
I've got a lot in his hands right now, and thank you for your comments. I appreciate it. Other comments? Councillor Hoy. Thank you. Um, just want to thank uh, Acting City Manager uh, Brian Martin for fixing the light at Beverly and Lancaster. <laughs> that was a big deal. There were truck drivers calling me saying, I'm sitting here for so long at this light at 4.30 in the morning, and it turned out it was broken. So thank you very much for that. I rode along with Officer Gill to five different neighborhood parties for National Neighborhood Night Out. So nice to see people out and interested in getting to know each other. Officer Gill fielded questions about staffing and public safety and was happy to leave questions about the payroll tax to me. The following night, uh, the North Lancaster Neighborhood Association night out took place at McKay Park. It was very well attended and very well done. I saw the mayor there, as a matter of fact. There was lovely uh, Oaxacan dancers and it was, it was wonderful. Um, great job to Deanna Garcia, the NOLA lead, um, and uh, including but not limited to the fabulous Christine Potter, her faithful assistant there. I also attended the Inglewood Forest Festival, and I was floored. I had no idea. That was my first time ever attending that park. I drive by it with pizza all the time, but I had never been there, and it was magical, truly magical. Lynn Takata does an, an incredible job. Um, of communicating and advertising well for that event. I was uh, ferrying pizzas from the restaurant more than once because we kept running out of Geppetto's food on the trailer. Uh, congratulations to all involved and I'll be back next year. In other news, as I left the parking lot to come to council this evening, I stopped to check on a houseless person who'd been lying under a tree all day next to the sidewalk. Folks had been complaining off and on today about his backside, his lower half, hanging out for all to see. Bless you. His name is Michael. He appears to be in his late 60s. It's pretty hot out here, I said. How hot, he asked, his face beat red, his eyes glassy and bloodshot. My phone told me it was 106, Michael. He said he's fine and doesn't want any kind of help. No shelter, no cooling, no nothing. I asked him to take care of himself and to keep his backside covered. He said he would. The action item this week, get to know your neighbors. That's how we're gonna change things. We're gonna take care of each other, find out which neighborhood association you belong to, and attend the meetings. Thank you, Councillor. Any other comments? Councillor Nordyke. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, one and all. It's great to be back at City Hall in an air-conditioned room. On triple-digit days like this, I get to travel from my air-conditioned house to my air-conditioned car to my air-conditioned office, and then here, to the air-conditioned city hall. We know that there are many residents in Salem who are not so fortunate. Um, and I want to take a moment to acknowledge, first of all, the cooling centers that will be available to folks around the city. I'll list those off in a moment. And I also want to acknowledge to all the workers out there who have to work in these conditions. I urge all of the employers out there to do everything you can to support and protect your employees during triple digit temperatures. Uh, the Salem area is home to a lot of agricultural workers. And even though the state has finally passed some protections during triple digit temperatures, uh, there's a lot more that we as a community can do to support folks who work in places that do not have the benefit of air conditioning. And I'm not just talking about our nursery workers, our workers at all of our various ag agricultural places, our vineyards, hops, berries, farmers, etc. Uh, but we have a lot of older buildings in town that do not have AC. We also have a lot of low income seniors who do not have AC. I know that every year the Salem Housing Authority works with technicians in the area to make sure that the frail and rickety little air conditioning units are up and running because low-income seniors are at great risk. Anytime temperatures rise to 104, your heart has to pump extra hard. It has to work extra hard to keep yourself at a reasonable temperature. So for anyone with a heart condition or other pre-existing conditions, this week is dangerous. So if you have a person in your neighborhood who might, might, who might have some needs, please check on them this week. This will be a great week just to help support each other in our community. Now, on to cooling shelters. 
The following cooling shelters will be open for this week. Salem Croc Center, Arches Day Center, Union Gospel Mission, Inside Out Refuge, the Recovery Outreach Community Center, Sanium Outreach Community Center, the Polk County Recovery Outreach Community Center, and as always, the Salem Public Library and Center 50 Plus are also available during their business hours for residents needing a safe place to cool off. If you have some time and are interested in volunteering, I'm sure there's always a need. I know that we have homeless outreach teams that go out there into the woods. People are walking out into the woods during these conditions to check on people and see if they can get them to take a shuttle or a chariot's bus to a cooling center at no charge to them. So my heart and my gratitude goes out to all the volunteers who are walking around in these conditions right now to talk to persons who are living outdoors who have to somehow figure out a way to stay alive during these conditions for this week. So I just wanted to comment on that. Switching gears briefly, this past weekend I participated in a parade, but not through the streets of city of Salem, but through the streets of the city of Kaiser. Uh, I say that because my place of business is located in Kaiser and I've really been enjoying getting to know the people, the businesses, the service providers and other residents who make Kaiser such a great place. And I was honored to march with one group in particular and they're known as Punks with Purpose and you may know them through Punks in the Park. Uh, Punks in the Park, which by the way is spelled with an X, they are a local nonprofit organization and they work with at-risk youth. And a lot of at-risk youth don't look like me. They've got five different shades of color of hair. They have five tattoos on this side of their face alone. And they need folks who can communicate with them and speak their language. And that's where Punks in the Park comes into play. They're an outstanding organization that works with youth who have endured trauma and all kinds of things. So. Uh, not only did we get to march in the streets of Kaiser with a full punk rock band blasting music all the way down River Road, we also got to promote their upcoming annual outreach event and resource fair. So this is a free event open to the public on September 16th, that's a Saturday, at the Marion Square Skate Park. And at this event, there'll be free donated food for youth, a free clothing closet for youth, youth speakers with lived experiences, a live rock show with six different bands, and lots of other booths for people who are there to support kids, meet them where they are, and celebrate who they are. So I encourage you to get to know this organization. They are doing outstanding work, and they have a real heart for these kids. Thank you. Thank you, Counselor. Any additional comments? All right. We have no proclamations this evening. We have no presentations. We have nobody signed up for public comment. We are on to the consent calendar. Thank you. I move approval of the consent calendar. I'll second that. A motion by Stapleton, seconded by Nishioka. Counselor, to your motion. Thank you. We have uh, three items on the consent calendar today. Item 3.1A, which are the uh, July 17th, 2023 Draft City Council work session minutes and item 3.1B, which is the July 24th, 2023 draft city council minutes. And then also item 3.2A, which is the acquisition of property for the State Street at 25th Street Southeast Intersection Improvement Project. And that concludes the consent calendar. Thank you, Councilor. Any further discussion? Will the recorder please call the roll? Councilor Nishioka? Aye. Councilor Phillips absent. Councilor Gwynn? Aye. Councilor Gonzalez? Aye. Councilor Hoy? Aye. Councilor Nordyke? Aye. Councilor Varney? Aye. Councilor Stapleton? Aye. Mayor Hoy? Aye. Motion passes. All right. We do not have any public hearings this evening. Item 5A has been removed from the agenda. Item 5B, Councilor Nordyke. Thank you. So I move my motion, which is identical to what it was last time, which is a motion regarding the creation of a South Salem Town Hall. More specifically, I move to direct staff to provide staff support and city resources to host the South Salem Town Hall for wards two, three, four, and seven. I'll second. Uh, motion by Nordyke, second by Gwen. Councilor, to your motion. Thank you so much. 
So uh, I'm glad that we're having an opportunity to revisit this. And what I really want to do is encourage conversation and hear from my peers. And before I do that, I would like to just set a little more groundwork. Uh, first of all, the concept of a South Salem Town Hall is for us to talk about the issues that impact South Salem specifically. For the four city councilors who represent South Salem, we know that at our neighborhood associations, we get a lot of very specific questions about specific parks, specific intersections, sidewalks, uh, and so on. And what I have detected over my three years now on city council is that there is a robust desire to have more of a community conversation. And the way that the city of Salem is comprised, there are various groups, right? There's a South Salem contingency where Salem is very much its own and North Salem is very much its own as well. And so my intention in bringing this motion is to speak up on behalf of the South Salem residents who've expressed an interest in having an opportunity to come together and talk about the traffic issues, the affordable housing issues, and the other issues for things that are happening in South Salem, where there is a lot of development, a lot of change, and a lot of questions from our community. Another thing I've noticed is that not everyone can make our neighborhood association meetings. And while I've not had the privilege of attending neighborhood association meetings in Councillor Gonzalez's ward or Councillor Varney's ward, I know that those neighborhood association meetings attract a small group. They attract a mere fraction of what the South Salem community actually is. So my intention is not just to repeat what we already say, in our neighborhood association meetings, but to really broaden the tent and have an opportunity to talk about the issues that, as I've discussed with my other peers in South Salem, what I think our community wants to hear. In making this motion, I am in no way saying nobody else should have one. In fact, I think every part of the city should have a town hall. And I just want to reiterate that because I think I raised that last time. I don't feel that it's my place to say what I think another counselor should do in their ward. When I came to council with this motion, it was after consulting with the other South Salem city councilors. So if other parts of the city want to host a town hall, I am all for it because this is an excellent bang for buck opportunity. When I talked to the staff, they did a very rough back of the napkin calculation and they said it would cost about $5,000 in staff time. That's only an estimate, but with that time, we would gain an unprecedented opportunity to meet with our peers directly in a forum larger than a corner of a uh, public school where some of my neighborhood association meetings convene or a Zoom. Some of my neighborhoods still exclusively meet by Zoom. So there's an accessibility issue that comes up with our current system. So. What I would love to see is for this to be a pilot project. I would love for South Salem to host this town hall right over here at the Laux Auditorium, and we would be happy to come back and talk about lessons learned from that experience. What kinds of questions did the residents bring up? What did we do well? What can we do better? And how can we implement those lessons learned for other parts of the city, for example? So one thing I want to make abundantly clear, in making this motion, I in no way preclude any of my other peers from bringing a motion to have a similar sort of open house or town hall or however we would like to call it for other parts of the city. I know that it's my job to speak up for my residents. My residents have said they're interested. And we have testimony from some neighborhood associations who would love an opportunity to come together and recruit new ideas, new blood, to their neighborhood associations. So the goal of this is to do the really important outreach work to reach groups we haven't previously committed or talked to, and it's all pretty cheap. The other thing I would add, you know, when we look at the administrative purchases that routinely come up on our council agenda, we routinely have items in our agenda where the city manager has approved expenses considerably more, orders of magnitude higher than a $5,000 town hall. And tonight is no exception. If you look at the list of items as an information report, not even necessarily up for a council vote, there are items that range from $45,000 for hardware and other installation changes, 
$100,000 for this, $50,000 for that, and so on. So I'm well aware of the budgetary concerns that we face, but I feel that this is a really great way to affordably engage with residents who haven't felt seen or heard. And anyone who would like to participate in that would be great. So I just want to start the conversation by saying my goal is to broaden the tent, not to create some exclusive uh, South Salem only option. That has never been the goal. It's not my place to make a motion for other parts of the city. I trust that my other counselors know best how to represent their own wards. But if they want to follow suit, I will be more than happy to support that. So with that in mind, I'd love to hear from my peers and see what questions or concerns they may have. I've tried to address them in these remarks, but if you feel there's something I haven't addressed, we're in council deliberations now, and now is the perfect time to talk about it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor, for the discussion. Councillor Varney. Thank you very much, Mayor Hoy. Um, I had a couple of, of questions. Is this for September? It could be, but we need. I want to find a time. I'm, I hope Mr. Mayor don't mind. I respond directly. No problem. Okay. We were looking at September, but I really want to make sure I find a time that all four city councilors are available. It appears that I spoke with Councilor Phillips. It doesn't appear he's available for September 21. And I really want all four of us to be there because each one of us represents a quarter of South Salem. So it probably won't happen in September at this rate. It's right around the corner. I know how busy we are. So I don't think it's likely we'll be able to do it on, uh, on the date that we had originally agreed to of September 21. Okay, okay. May I ask one more question? Certainly. Um, uh, let's see. How I saw the agenda. I, I didn't look at it yesterday, but I looked at it a couple days ago. Um, how will the topics be chosen? So, uh, Councilors Gwynn and Nishioka and I met at City Hall and we arrived at these as a group. Uh, Councilor Phillips was not able to make it that day, but we conferred with him afterwards. So we met, the South Salem Councilors met as a group to talk about what we thought the most pressing issues were. So that's how we arrived at those four topics. Engagement with the city. Uh, affordable housing and overall development, transportation issues, and homelessness. And we would divide the time equally. This is not a show for just one counselor. Our, on the agenda, we would be dividing the time equally so that every counselor from South Salem would have equal access and would be talking about one of those particular topics. We have staff support as needed for any questions that might stump us. We all know sometimes these things feel a little bit like stump the counselor. Why, which is why it's so helpful to have staff support so that we can put on a professional presentation with the latest from staff on developments. We want to be accurate, basically. I hope that answers your question. Yes, thank you. That, that makes a lot of sense. Um, I do have some concerns about this, uh, given we have a lot of unknowns coming up over the next three months about what we might even be able to discuss or have staff work on. Um, that was one of the reasons I was asking about the, the topics. Um, you know, there are major issues that I know uh, residents are going to have questions about that we may not even be able to engage in or talk about. And so that's why I'm really hesitant right now to support this. I think it's a good idea, but I think we're putting, getting a little bit ahead of ourselves right now uh, with what we're looking at for the next couple months. And can I respond? I mean, the, the purpose, the agenda has four topics. We, we would have a set agenda for it that we've laid out in the materials. So we're very transparent about that. You can see what it would look like right up front. And those topics are all fair game. So is, I'm trying to understand what's the concern about transportation affordable housing, homelessness, and overall how to engage with the city. Those are the topics that we agreed to. So if there's a concern about having a conversation with the, with the public about it, I'm not clear what that would be. Thank you, Mayor Hoy. Um, I guess my concern, so you're saying that there would not be an opportunity to ask questions about topics that were not on the agenda? 
There would be a Q&A at the end, but the vast majority of the agenda is something that we've already workshopped. But as for Q&A, any time we go to a neighborhood association meeting, we've already been briefed by our city attorneys on what we can and cannot talk about. And most things we can talk about, but we've been trained repeatedly and given plenty of information what we can and cannot discuss. But most topics are fair game. Councilor, I think what I'm hearing from the Councilor from Ward 8 is a concern about staff discussing political issues because we have a pending ballot measure. That's what I think she was, I was, I was hearing, but if I'm reading correctly between the lines, the, the concern about the, the pending vote and having staff present, certainly councilors or any elected official could discuss any of those things, but I think the concern would be about staff. If I'm not, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but that's what I was hearing. Oh, that's what you mean, okay. Yeah, that's what I meant, Excuse Well, me. the questions would be directed to the councilors. This is a town hall engagement with the councilors. So I think that the staff who are present are the same sort of staff who are here in this room right now. And they know they are very well briefed and well read on what they can and cannot say. So we can certainly have another conversation, a planning meeting with the city attorney beforehand to address that. But I think the city staff know perfectly well what they can discuss and what they can't. But the Q&A is for the counselors. The, the staff are only there if we had a technical question about, say, Mildred Lane and putting in a traffic light, not about what do you think about a political topic. I think we can ensure there's adequate professional judgment from the counselors and staff that are present who would be most likely management level employees on what we can cannot say. So just like here at a council meeting, anytime we ask questions of staff, they're very careful in their remarks. They know what they're doing, and I trust them. Additional comments? Councillor Hoy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just this morning, we all heard from a constituent who um, is opposed to this uh, prospect. And for some reason, what she wrote really rang true with me. And she said three things. Additional expenses of $5,000, my words, at this time, um, when our city is struggling financially, seems, my words, in, inappropriate. In a, in a good way, though. This is, I know that the intention is, is wonderful here. Um, she also added that staff demands are not being met now. They'll be further strapped. Um, she also adds that participants will likely be my word likely, be a majority of residents who already follow and are engaged. And I, I really feel that might be true. And I have concerns about all of the wards, and mine included, and no feel inspired to become more involved with the neighborhood associations, and that that's free. And those meetings are happening regularly and to be able to encourage people to attend in greater number i think would be less expensive so those are just my thoughts thank you thank you counselor counselor stapleton did you did I, i'm trying to remember the cue sure. sorry no no worries um yes i share a lot of the same concerns um and you know those haven't changed i think since the last time that we talked about this um you know, I was thinking about a success that the city had, and that was, um, and I was able to connect with Irma about this today, and I don't know if you all remember this, and Jose, maybe you remember, um, they had um, a, like a Salem Connect, I think that's what it was called, I didn't go, um, but they just, it was a partnership between the city and nonprofits and, and other vendors, and they all came, came together, um, and she said it was, 200 to 250 people came. Everything was in Spanish, and every person there spoke Spanish. And so it was this really great outreach effort that we did within the city to connect people um, in our community that primarily speak Spanish. Um, and I was thinking, that's what I want to see more of, right? Like those big events where we get 200 people, 250 people to come and it's really um, addressing immediate needs that folks have. I know Irma was telling me stories about folks who would come in with 
I got these government papers and they're all in English and I need somebody to translate these for me, right? Um, help me start a business, how do I do that, right? Just these really, um, how do I reserve a park, right? Um, all those different things and I would love to see um, how we could come up with that and, and in this whole thought process of working through this really great successful event that the city held last year um, and trying to understand um, and kind of wrap my head around a town hall idea that uh, Councilor Nordyke has brought forward. I just, I feel like, um, I feel like it's not the right timing as far as um, creating a communications plan and having somebody lead that effort um, and find out what is going to work best, how we are gonna get those 200 people there, what's the location, are we gonna do multiple ones around the city, um, how do we link in council if that is appropriate to be there? Um, those are kind of the things that I want to see more of. Um, and so um, I can't support the motion as it is right now. Um, I do fully agree that um, and encourage all of the counselors here to, to host town halls on their own. I know I was just talking to Mickey about one for West Salem that we wanna plan for this fall. Uh, Mayor, I spoke with you about doing one uh, in Ward 1 to come with me and do that. Um, and, and really to kind of take on those political things on my own um, and, and maybe with the support of the mayor who uh, is a great support to be have at these things. I know you've been making the rounds at neighborhood associations and that's always really great to have you there. Um, or fellow counselors like, um, you know, Varney over here, who's gonna do awesome, me and you together um, in West Salem. So um, that's kind of where I fall on this. I feel like there's a part that the city can play um, that they've kind of already figured out um, an idea on how to move forward. I wanna encourage that. And I also wanna encourage town halls for us city councilors to get out there and really answer our um, constituents' questions on all manner of topics. So that's kind of where I land on this. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor. Further discussion? Councillor Gonzalez. Thank you, Mayor. You know, I, um, I'm down to support this because it's, a, it's something, uh, it's an effort is better than no effort. Um, we always learn something every time. It could be help us create um, that event at the Center 50 Plus was amazing. Yeah, I just, that, that took a lot of work though. I'm sure it took a lot of staff time too. You know, um, the only thing I would say is um, the concept of a town hall is listening to the people. And I was looking at the agenda, I thought, it's, I think it's the reverse. I think we, we left a little bit, there's a little bit of time for Q&A. It should be the opposite. We should, maybe a few topics, but really hear from the people. Really, if they feel like they spoke um, less than we did, then it wasn't a true town hall. You know, so I, that's how I would uh, envision one. That way, um, it encourages them to come to the next one. You know, because if we're just um, sharing the same information, even though it's well prepared and it's probably stuff they need to know, but you know, when you're out there talking to people that aren't engaged, the, the, none of these things really matter to them. It's those things that they're gonna need at those moments. What do I do if my water's gonna get shut off tomorrow? Who do I call? You know, um, issues like uh, Councilor Stapleton said, those are the issues that I think would really want, would really be impactful to us and, um, and uh, help us uh, prepare better town halls after that. You know, so. Thank you, Councilor. I, your thoughts are very similar to the ones I've been having about this topic, and I think that that's where we're kind of struggling right now is we're calling it a town hall, which to, in my mind, a town hall is exactly like you described. It's where we listen and offer thoughts, you know, answer questions, things like that, but it's more where we're listening, and which is, I think, why Councilor Varney was struggling earlier with the, thing, the political question, because that's not really a role for staff. That's really our role. And so that, to me, that's where, it's like we're kind of doing this as we're having this conversation, because we're calling a town hall, which I've done town halls, and I think Councilor Nordyke mentioned last time that she did a town hall very successfully last year by herself. And that's exactly the kind of thing I envision as a town hall, the kind of thing that was at, at Center 50 Plus, the Salem Connects, that was not really a town hall, but it was a great thing. It just wasn't a town hall. It was an information sharing, it was a resource fair, it was a, all sorts of things, community building, so I think, that, uh, I think that we're struggling with what it is we're trying to describe here and whether we agree on it or not. And I think that's why we're having this sort of conversation that's not exactly connecting. So yeah, anyway, those are my thoughts right now. So Councilor Gwynn. I thought it was a great idea from the beginning. And I think that if the city has to spend $5,000 so that staff is there for us, it's a small price to pay. 
um, and it doesn't sound like we're going to have the support of the city council, I want you to know that I hope you and I can just do our own um, for, for our parts of South Salem and if the other councilors don't. I mean, you had a very successful one on your own, and I think we can do it and do just fine. So thank you. Thanks for the idea, and thanks for bringing it forward. Further discussion? Councilor Nishioka. Thank you, Mayor Hoy. Um, so again, to the discussion points of me pulling the motion I had, and I think that what I was striving for was something that um, Councillor uh, Stapleton was explaining in the Salem Connect. It's more of the idea of an open house and trying to get information out, an opportunity for citizens to come and ask questions. Um, and I do feel that city staff being present at those would be helpful if it is a specific, um, potentially subject matter such as transportation. Um, but back to what I had said earlier, I think the timing is not right. Um, and so, uh, again, I was trying to find that more inclusive feeling in my motion that I pulled. And, um, and I also feel that it's just the timing is poor right now. I think in a few months it would be different. Thank you, Councillor. Further discussion? Councillor Nordyke. Sure. Thank you all for the feedback. I appreciate it. The time is always right for community engagement. So I, I hear what you're saying, and I'll certainly take it into consideration. But I encourage you folks, the public is hurting right now. There is a huge trust deficit that has been created. So declining opportunities to engage with the public is declining opportunities to rebuild relationships. So I would encourage you to keep that in mind. And this will be the, this would be, the best $5,000 the city can possibly spend on creating relationships. We should be doing that in addition to events that Councillor Stapleton described at the Center 50 Plus, not in lieu of. This motion is not about this and only this. There are infinite more ways that we can engage with the public. And I did my best to bring forth a motion after consulting with my peers in South Salem, after consulting with neighbors, in South Salem, and after determining the cost would be infinitesimal in a budget that is chock-a-block with items like $57,000 for traffic paint. Uh, let me see here. $55,000 in utility building and mobile field work solutions in backfill. $75,000 in project management services from Rice Consulting, LLC. The budget matters. There's, you won't uh, get any argument from me. But again, I feel that this would have been money well spent. But I'm happy to discuss further, go back to the drawing board another time. And, but I do encourage folks to consider we should be doing more outreach, not less. And part of involving city staff in this is to find those people who are not already plugged into the neighborhood associations. With a little bit of money spent on the city staff, we can print a bunch of flyers to post it in neighborhoods all over South Salem who haven't had a neighborhood association reach out to them in a long time. We can put it up on places where traditionally no one has asked for their input or their advice. And that is in incumbent upon the motion that I have in front of me. So again, I appreciate all the feedback. I don't feel we do enough of this where we actually discuss publicly. I think way too much happens behind closed doors. I think way too much of these motions are decided before they hit the desk right here, and that's not okay. And I have no problem trotting out a motion to hear openly from my peers and to workshop it and have them tell me what they don't like about it and what they would, how they would like it to look better. I appreciate all of that feedback from all of you. And I hope that we can do more of that because this is the time that I have set to meet with you. I have a very busy day job, so do many of you. And so this is the time where we should be having real conversations, where we can talk about it and I don't have to ration, ooh, I've talked to this person so I can only talk to two more or three more or whatever the case may be. So I hope that we can have more candid conversations in council chambers so that the public's not wondering 
Why didn't they support this motion? This seems like a no-brainer. I can tell you that's what some of my NAs will be wondering, like, really? So thank you for your feedback. I think doing more emphasis on listening makes a lot of sense for these town halls. Thank you, Councilor Gonzalez. Uh, Councilor Stapleton, I really appreciate your comments about having more conversations in Spanish. 100% agree with that. And Councilor Hoy, everyone, I appreciate all of your remarks. So I'm ready to vote. And I am willing to agree to disagree because as professionals, that, that's what we have to do on a regular basis. So thank you all for considering the motion. And now I know how to explain it when I go back to my residence. And uh, I would love to do a town hall with you, Councillor Gwen. that'll be fun. Take care. Thank you, Councillor. Further discussion? All right, will the recorder please call the roll? Councillor Phillips, absent. Councillor Gwen, Aye. Councillor Gonzalez? Aye. Councillor Hoy? Nay. Councillor Nordyke? Aye. Councillor Varney? Nay. Councillor Stapleton? Nay. Councillor Nishioka? Nay. Mayor Hoy? Nay. Motion fails. All right, on to item 5C. We are going to begin item 5C with a motion from Councillor Stapleton, and then we're going to go to staff, and then we're going to have a conversation. Great. I move that we affirm the planning administrator's decision to conditionally approve the consolidated application for subdivision tentative plan urban growth area preliminary declaration class three site plan review for class two adjustments, uh, tree regulation variance, and a class one design review. I'm not sure anybody in the public knows what I just said. Do we have a second? I'll second. Motion by Stapleton, seconded by Nishioka. Let's go initially to uh, Ms. Anderson Ogilvie to kind of uh, do a level setting for us on where we're at, how we got here, and what's in front of us, please. Hi there, Lisa Anderson Ogilvie, your planning administrator. Um, yes, I appreciate it is, <laughs> there's many cases um, combined into one. So this is uh, generally a proposal for 436 uh, new multifamily units in West Salem on Dokes Ferry Road. Um, they're asking to subdivide the property into six lots and um, develop on some of those lots and then some would remain vacant um, in, in a mixed use zone for future development. Um, and then they have a various uh, applications that go along with that, which driveway approach permits and um, adjustments for some of the design standards for multifamily and then a, a tree variance to remove some of the significant trees on, on site. Um, the decision that the staff issued has 62 conditions of approval. 63 conditions of approval um, uh, requiring um, to meet some basic standards as far as you know yes you have to install a water line yes you have to build the streets etc things that are shown on their plans and then a few things that will require some redesign um, uh, adjusting the plan to meet some setbacks to save some additional significant trees to reconfigure parking lots etc um, to try to balance the need for developing the multifamily um, and preserving as many of the significant trees as possible and consideration of the streets that are required the street improvements on the boundary streets water uh, utilities um, water sewer stormwater and the uh, significant grading it's a pretty steep site it's going to need grading to meet fire standards for um, our intersections and ADA across the apartments um, at the public hearing you s you heard all the testimony and closed the hearing and then we held the written record open so we have um, some memos that we've been sending out to you. So there was uh, seven days for new testimony by anybody that wanted to submit testimony. And then there was an additional seven days for anybody to rebut that testimony. And then the applicants submitted their final written argument um, earlier today. So that's all been presented to the council. And then tonight is deliberations. Uh, no testimony um, can be received by, by anybody. Hopefully Thank you for that summary. summary. That helps uh, kind of get us back to where we were. And now we are here to deliberate this um, and, to, and make a decision tonight. So open the floor for discussion. Councilor Varney. Thank you very much. Um, 
Yeah, I appreciate all the thoughts, the comments, the memos, all the multiple pages I've read through, all the code material, everything over the past <laughs> couple of months. I wanted to say, I think this is on, okay. As a council, we're tasked with making a decision whereby we have to balance our policies of housing, climate resilience, and livability in our communities with Salem's vision for the future. I do have issues and concerns with this plan for a number of reasons. In a nutshell, based on the documents I've been provided by which to evaluate this application, the applicant has fared to do their due diligence in consideration and evaluation of all potential alternatives for tree preservation, stormwater mitigation, and ADA accessibility. I do not believe the applicant has met the burden of proof showing that there are no reasonable alternatives other than what they have proposed. Therefore, the applicant's burden of proof has not been satisfied. When this piece of property was purchased for future development, the purchaser knew there would be challenges associated with the topography. They also would have been aware of the number of historic trees and their requirements for preservation. The community concerns regarding the increased traffic congestion and the existence of sensitive wetlands in a portion of the property. Just because the applicant is allowed to build up to 500 units under the 2022 comprehensive plan does not mean the topography and characteristics of the property would allow that degree of development. Based on the assemblage of hundreds of pages of materials I've reviewed the past few months the past months, I'm concerned about what I see as gaps in the information that has been provided. The 63 conditions that staff had to add to even get this project to this stage of approval process are testament to those gaps. I do want to thank city staff for bending over backwards to try to fit this square peg into a round hole. They've utilized many, many hours of valuable taxpayer funded time to get this to where we are today. On a positive note, we do need housing. I agree, I'm not against development, but it does need to be smart development incorporating the tools and knowledge we have acquired through decades of both mistakes and successes. Developed uh, with an awareness of the characteristics of the community and the impacts to the local community as well as the natural environment. Yes, we need additional housing, and we need to do what we can to keep more people from becoming houseless. We also need housing that people can afford to live in. I hear that this will be market rate housing, and so it makes me wonder, will the Salem resident earning at or below the median income for Salem be able to afford a three bedroom apartment for their family within this development? Uh, back to my concerns, trees. We have heard lots of testimony from uh, the West Salem Neighborhood Association, the Watershed Council, and other members as, of the public as to the importance of trees. Trees are very near and dear to me as well. We all know how important trees are to our environment. We also know how hard it is to find a parking place under a tree when we go to a parking lot on a hot afternoon like today was. Our City of Salem Tree City USA has a can tree canopy goal. We are burning up more and more every day from heat and low humidity. I believe we need to preserve as many trees as possible moving forward, and I think that this plan could preserve more trees. Another concern is stormwater. Our Salem Code requires as little disruption to the natural environment as possible. This development destroys the natural beauty and essential ecological functions of this site. This development is adjacent to properties which utilize wells to supply their water. How will this development, with its removal of groundwater regulating trees and surface vegetation, and its disruption of topography and soils, impact people who rely on wells? When an area has this topography and is the source of springs and streams, both on the property and at lower elevations, because. Uh, because of the soil's slow percolation rate, it's even more crucial that green stormwater structures be in place to allow a slow and steady recharge of the groundwater system from the higher elevations of the property. I have not seen anything addressing this specifically. 
In chapter 71, stormwater of our code, section 71.001 under objectives in that chapter, uh, item B, to protect to the greatest extent practical life property receiving water's aquatic life and the environment from loss, injury, degradation, or damage by pollution, erosion, low flows, excessive flows, flooding, landslides, and other potential hazards, whether from natural causes or from human activity. Item E, implement site-specific practices, including using green stormwater infrastructure to mimic natural hydrologic functions as much as practical. And in section 71.075, the requirements for all projects, any person conducting a project shall, under D, preserve existing trees to the maximum extent feasible to minimize site-specific post-development stormwater runoff volumes and rates of discharge. Item E, where vegetation exists in the pre-development condition, preserve the vegetation to the maximum extent feasible. And F, provide landscaping and plant new trees to the maximum extent feasible to minimize site-specific post-development stormwater runoff volumes and rates of discharge. And lastly for J, if the site discharges to a known wetland as designated on the local wetland inventory or otherwise is delineate, delineate, delineated by the city or developer, it, you're to protect the hydrologic conditions, vegetative community, and substrate characteristics of the wetlands to preserve adverse impacts to the effective wetlands. So I'm very, very concerned about stormwater and the way it has been approached to this uh, time. Um, under section 71.095, under the design, it says green stormwater infrastructure as a flow control facility shall be used to the maximum extent feasible. We could use stormwater planters, rain gardens, combination swales, other things to help percolate the water down into the, into the ground, which is essential for this area. So I say all this to say there are alternatives, and I have not seen any plans incorporating these other alternatives. The other thing I'm concerned about is ADA, uh, Americans with Disabilities Access. Access. I've seen lots of testimony and emails from concerns. Uh, and it brings up a point that wasn't discussed in the planning materials much at all. And when I looked through all the drawings and maps and everything, um, I looked at the number of and location of handicapped parking spots. I don't know how many are required, but it doesn't seem to be very many there. And also, I would assume that they would be placed right next to where people enter the buildings, but many of them are at the end of the side of the parking lot or across the parking lot from there. And so I didn't understand what the justification was for that. I'm also concerned about road A, uh, the slope of it without a viable alternative for folks that are using wheelchairs to get around in this development with a 12% grade. I can't even imagine having to go up that to get up to Landegard, to be able to then go down Landegard to get over to the high school, for example, if you're a student. Um, then uh, also mentioned is public access and easement from street A to lot six for once that gets developed. I mean, I'm really, there are some real challenges there for individuals with mobility um, disabilities. So why is it important to us to focus on this? We, the city, have jurisdiction over pedestrian access routes such as sidewalks, curb ramps, and parking areas. Every development has its challenges. I realize that. West Salem has its topographical challenges, but this site in particular is especially ill-prepared to meet the needs of disabled residents. It is incumbent on council to approve plans that meet the needs of all of our residents. Any portion of a sidewalk or driveway that anyone in this development or their guests must accommodate must accommodate people with all of their different needs. Addressing these access requirements up front benefits everybody now, both now and into the future. Thanks. Thank you, thank you, Councillor. I need to pause for just a moment and go to Councillor Gonzalez for a procedural issue.
Yeah, I just need to, uh, I'm going to abstain because I didn't attend the first public hearing. Yeah. So you're not participating not in these participate. deliberations or the vote? That's correct. Thank you, Councillor. Further discussion? Maybe we'll give somebody else a bite at the apple first and then we'll come back to you. I, I would just say, Councillor Varney, uh, just my reactions to, to what you had to say, I, I agree with many of the things that you said. The problem that I have, though, is that I don't know that most of those things give us authority to vote no. That's one of the, the things about land use and our quasi-judicial role that's really um, both frustrating and bizarre about our laws is that we're, as elected officials in this role, we're, we're supposed to be, um, uh, we're supposed to take the facts and apply the rules and make a decision. And it's, you know, we're used to making more political calculations rather than, than uh, these kinds of decisions. And so, and I, the, the public often gets very frustrated with us when we take a vote that they think uh, we shouldn't have, but yet it's one that uh, there aren't really options in the law. And when we've done that, you've seen different times uh, when we, the majority of this council has done just that, and then we've been overturned by, Lu by Luba. And so uh, in my reading of all of this case and looking at everything, I, I might agree with many of those things, but I don't think that there are grounds to deny this. That's, that's my trouble and that, that's with, the, with this situation. So I hear you and I appreciate your thoughts, but I, I don't see that there are grounds for an actual denial. That's, that's the conclusion I came to. So, Councilor Stapleton. Thank you. Um, yeah, just as the other counselor who represents West Salem, this is a really hard one. I know that you've really struggled with this. Um, and I think, uh, Mayor Hoy, I probably land right where you're at, just trying to go through all this information and find any kind of grounds for voting no, um, and I know I could I could do a political vote, I could, <laughs> um, but that's just not in me, that's not how I function, I guess. Um, so I, I am struggling a lot with this one. Um, I agree with everything you've said. Um, the trees that we're losing are heartbreaking. I know you and I connect um, over that issue. Stormwater is a huge issue. I grew up in West Salem, just up the hill from this. Um, and with all the development, my parents' well started to go dry and we had to dig deeper. And so the water issue in West Salem is a huge issue. It's very real. Um, I really appreciate your advocacy for the ADA issues within this um, development. I know I was really frustrated to see the super blocks that were going to be built um, just because I'm, I really want to see not so car centric developments be built and this to me feels very car centric. Um, as the counselor for uh, the downtown kind of portion of West Salem, I understand the concerns about cars um, and traffic and all of those things are very real. Um, I just don't know if I can get to a place where I can honestly vote no on this. Further discussion? Councilor Varney. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Hoy. Uh, I, I certainly understand the position and at this point, we're kind of forced into this with all these contingent conditions. Um, I will not be supporting this motion to approve this plan. I don't feel the applicant has met the burden of proof showing that there are no reasonable alternatives. However, should this plan uh, be approved this evening when my colleagues vote following these deliberations, or obviously very soon, uh, should it be approved with its 63 conditions, I would like the following entered into the record. I will be approaching uh, staff uh, because I'm going to follow what's going on with this. First of all, I request that staff provide a quarterly progress report on each of these 63 conditions. With each condition will be listed and after each will be a red, a yellow, or a green to indicate the applicant's progress toward meeting those conditions. I want to be notified prior to the city signing off on its acceptance for each condition. And then secondly, should the applicant submit an application for an exception or a variance associated with any of these 63 conditions, I would like to be informed and included in the decision-making process for any of these applications. Thanks. 
Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Hoy? I just want to say that I applaud you, Councillor Varney, for your efforts in this. And it's obvious that you care deeply and that you've poured a lot of time and effort into this mm -hmm. evening's presentation. Um, I just, you inspire me. Thank you. Further discussion? Councillor Nishioka. Thank you. Um, I wanted also to comment about all the hard work you've put into this, and I know that your heart is very sad with some of the situations that you're concerned about, and I, I appreciate that you've asked that you be kept informed, and I, um, that's something that I will keep in my wheelhouse for, for potential opportunities um, and again I just want to say excellent work excellent work done on this and it's it puts us constantly in a very tough position um, because we have limits on what we can do so I again appreciate all the work you've done Councilor Stapleton thank you um, is it all right if I ask staff a qu quick question yes yeah? I got the yes. <laughs> <did> eyebrows <laughs> yes go ahead um, so one of the things that was really frustrating, I know for Councilor Varney and for me, was that there was not a stormwater plan yet within this. Um, and I know that that was um, acceptable in the current rules that we have regarding this. Can council change that at all, or is that a state rule? Um, no, I believe it's our local code. We require preliminary plan. I'm looking at public works staff and so if they shake their head, no. We require preliminary plan. We're basically looking for them to demonstrate they've set aside enough area that we think they could meet the requirements. Um, and then later they have to do the full plan when they're actually engineering the streets and, and, and the site. Um, I would just say it's a very expensive to do a lot of the work up front that maybe we would want them to do um, and then it, it it gets harder for us when they come in if they've done all the work and we say well no we don't like where you put that street or that doesn't meet our code or we're not going to approve the way you've done that building and you need to move it and we start moving things around which we do a lot in the land use review with them um, so it's kind of a balance of of how much money they're putting in up front but we i believe we could change our code to require that as an upfront and Mr. Atchison has some additional clarification yeah. and thoughts on that. Uh, Dan Atchison, City Attorney. Just to add on to that, there's also one of the needed housing state mm -hmm. laws that uh, prohibit us from imposing unreasonable cost and delay on needed housing developments. And so if they were going to spend a great sum of money to provide detailed plans that then had to be substantially altered or something like that, we could get into a situation where we'd violate that statute. Okay. Thank you so much. Further discussion? Are you ready to vote? It's either discussion or vote. <laughs> Those are the only two choices we have. <laughs> Councillor Gwynn. Now, I just want to ask a question. So um, Councillor Varney asked to be notified and provided with a quarterly report. Is that something that we can request? I so, mean, I, I'm just curious. Do you want to answer that? I, I mean, if we're concerned about, about money and what we're spending, is that something we can request? So, I'll, I'll take a stab at it great. if you don't mind. <laughs> um, yes, you can request it. Um, to the extent that staff has the, the resources to provide quarterly reports in extensive detail on every land use application, I would venture to guess no. We don't have that kind of resource. Um, but to some extent, I think we can provide updates on particular applications to specific counselors or to council if it's desired. You're welcome. So to clarify, just making your making the request isn't something that makes that happen. Any time that council wants to direct staff to do anything that takes more than one hour, we have to have a majority vote. And so I think that how I heard Councilor Varney's comments were sort of a, a just putting staff on notice, like, look, this is I'm going to keep abreast of this, and I'm watching, and please let's continue to have a conversation. Um, that's how I heard it, but I, others may have heard it differently. But people would be welcome to bring a motion. Uh, more specific and more detailed if they chose and then if we were to get a majority then that'd be the way we would do it but does that help great further discussion will the recorder please call the roll councillor Gwynn aye because I'm you're voting on uh, 
the, the staff recommendation, which is to approve. Yes, aye. Okay. Councilor Gonzalez is abstaining. Councilor Hoy. Aye. Councilor Nordyke. Aye, and thank you, Councilor Varney, for your work. Councilor Varney. Nay. Councilor Stapleton. Aye. Councilor Nishioka. Aye. Councilor Phillips, absent. Mayor Hoy. Aye. Motion passes. All right. Thanks, everybody. Those are not always the easiest conversations to have. We are now on to information reports. We'll go through them one at a time. If you have any questions or comments, please uh, let me know. Item 6A. Councillor Nordyke. Thank you. I would just note that this list of administra administrative purchases is over $5 million. And I suspect it will pass without a blink or an eye or a concern. Thank you. It's an information report, so it's no vote. Yeah. All right, item no. 6B. Item 6C. Councillor Hoy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I just think it's important to state for the public record that um, I was one of the Salem residents to receive the flyer about this um, tax that the referendum was filed over. Um, I asked a few questions and was given some information that I think it's important to just have be noted. Um, that the flyer cost the city of Salem over $100,000 to put out in uh, printing and materials, postage, um, staff time and consulting. And I just want to confirm that that's correct. Mr. Eggleston. If I may, uh, Josh Eggleston, Chief Financial Officer. Uh, the direct, co direct cost for approximately 75000 There's an additional contract for 25000 for a consultant. A small portion of that was related to the flyer. So uh, over 75000 but not 100000 Okay, I, I'm sorry. I just was a little bit confused by the response I got. Made it sound like that 25000 was a... Um, an amount to be added to the 75,000. Yeah, understood. So the city hired a communication consultant to talk about Safe Salem more generally. Uh, the actual flyer portion to develop that was a much smaller amount than that entire contract. Okay, thank you for the clarification. Um, also, I think it's important to note um, that that mailer went out um, six days before the referendum was complete and I was surprised and concerned that what if the referendum isn't successful, then that would be a waste of money. Um, also, if we're in a budget crisis, is this the, really the right time to be spending this kind of money? Um, that is a concern of mine and of others in the community. Um, I just believe that the people have a right to know how their money is being spent. So, thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Item, anything else on item 6C? Item 6D. Councillor Nishioka. Thank you, Mayor Hoy. Um, I simply want to say that the developer for this property um, had uh, communicated with me some frustrations in uh, the process um, but it sounds like things are going uh, quite well at this point um, and uh, this was um, just something that's in my ward and I just wanted to say thank you to Public Works and um, and I know that uh, the developer will enjoy to see this taken care of thank you counselor anything else on that item item 6e item 6f Item 6G. All right. We have no first readings. We have no second readings. We have nobody signed up under number eight public comment. We're adjourned.